on first response, this one about 911 wait times. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your plans, and we'll start with you, Ms. Cochran Johnson, to address long wait times in DeKalb County when folks pick up the phone and call 911 in an emergency? Yes, I, I would like to say that, you know, I've received multiple calls uh, as recent as last month, uh, even though I'm a newly retired commissioner, expressing concern for wait time. Uh, currently within DeKalb County, we work from a matrix and depending upon the nature of the, uh, of the particular um, incident, it determines the time for response. So we have various levels. Level one, of course, requires a three uh, to five minute on site. Uh, but I do believe that it's going to be very important for us to carefully evaluate this current service provider. Um, currently in DeKalb County, when you fail to meet the response time, there is a fine that is levied against the service provider. I don't want the fines, I want the service. So if it requires us to expand the existing contract, I'm more than prepared to do that, to ensure that we are delivering service. Uh, the last thing that anyone should want, whether you're an elected official or you are a member of the general public, is to be in an, a situation where you are in need of critical service and there is no response. Um, also, I believe that it's very imperative as it relates to the 311 callers within DeKalb County to increase pay. Um, when we look uh, across the state uh, at the service that's being provided and the costs that are associated with it, uh, we could certainly do better. So I do propose also across DeKalb County as it relates to our general employees, a ongoing COLA, a cost of living allowance for them because we have not adjusted salaries in most of our departments in line with state and some federal levels. All right, thank you for that. We're talking 911 response calls, Mr. Bradshaw. Yep, staffing levels in that uh, function are way too low. And it is a byproduct of compensation, benefits, and training. So I would make a heavy investment in all of those so that uh, the folks that are interfacing with people in an emergency situation a well-trained, professional, well-compensated, and want to be there to help people work through their issues. Thank you for that, Mr. Johnson. And I will add to that, I think the other part is education. You got people that call 911 and ask, what time is it? Do I set my clock back? What's the weather? Uh, things of that nature is non-emergency calls, and that clogs up the 911 system. So we do have some of the most competent uh, folks in our 911 system, but when you have to handle a lot of non-emergency calls, so first thing I would do besides compensation is education, education to our public. And we have to stay on top of that because we need to make sure we drive some of those calls to our 311 system or our non-emergency number. That would drive down those calls at least by 25%. And guess what? That frees up those 911 officers to deal with the, the emergencies and the critical things that, that have to be dealt with in DeKalb County and so it's about education, it's about compensation, but it's also about training the residents as well as our 911 operators on how do we move forward. All right, well, we and appreciate I, Not a rebuttal, but uh, <laughs> I like numbers. At some point I'm going to have to start docking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> as, as, uh, as, as I like numbers, so I want to say to people that are watching, we receive over 60,000 non-emergency calls per month to our emergency line. So I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Commissioner Larry Johnson, and I do believe that public education. Yes. We have DCTV, mm -hmm. but we have never, in my opinion, programmed it properly, coming from news and media, with vignettes and information that would help steer uh, public reception and responses. So I do believe that that is very important to educate. All right, well, we've got something to talk about then in the break, which we're going to take.